What's up, you guys? FSC Truck Shop. Well, this has been a while in the making, but either way, here we are. This right here is Orwell. Most of you guys are following me from the old channel FSC Speed Shop, now changed over to FSC Trucking. This is Orwell. Orwell is my 1984 Peterbilt to 362 cab over, powered by a 3406B Caterpillar in 84. I get this question a lot. In 84, they painted the engines white. Packard products, for whatever reason, I think Prestige ordered all the Caterpillars when they ordered them in the late 70s, early 80s to be painted white. Matterhorn white, to be exact. There is a difference between the marine white and Matterhorn white. What I don't know what they call marine white. By the way, there it is. So there's my white Caterpillar, or rather what used to be white. It's pretty nasty. Well, if you read the title and saw the thumbnail, you probably figured out what in the world we're doing. But this has been a while in the making here. A little history real fast. Back on FSC Trucking, back when it was FSC Speed Shop, again, before it was even a trucking channel, I had rebuilt this engine, and I honestly avoided YouTube because I didn't think anybody wanted to see this truck on YouTube, so I didn't upload anything uh, with it. Except I did put up a couple videos regarding the first start of the engine. So with the exception of a projection video, and the first start video, I started putting a couple of vlogs out there of me driving the truck. And at the time, COVID had shut down all the car shows, so the automotive channel had died, basically. So I figured I gotta put some content out, let me throw the truck up there. And you guys apparently liked it a lot, so much where FSC Speed Shop, the A channel, the primary channel, became FSC Trucking, and here we are. Now, with the content having to be separate, one from on the road content, the other from in the shop content regarding trucks, we started this channel right here, FSC Truck Shop. Now, what we're gonna do, the first time we're gonna put Orwell on FSC Truck Shop is replace this turbo. Now, back when I rebuilt this engine, this turbocharger was replaced. The original one didn't have anything wrong with it, per se. I just felt, you know, I already put a lot of money into the engine. Let me go ahead and put a new turbo in it. And the old one was a little stuck, you spin it, it didn't spin as free. I figured, you know what, let me give it a shot. So put the new turbo in here. Well, the warranty lasts about a year, actually right out of year, and I got maybe a year and four months out of this one. I, I don't know why it broke, but it started with some weird noises. You guys that are following me from FSC Trucking have heard the turbo gradually change noises. It started when I was going up over the mountains, going to the west coast to go pick up my son Matthew's car. I had my nephew in the truck, in fact. It started making weird noises, and from then it kind of just progressed getting louder and louder and more grindier, for lack of a better term. But it wasn't failing. It was still making monster boost. I don't see what the problem was. We did take it apart off camera, and I never released this video until now. So long story short, I was looking into some uh, stuff on Facebook Marketplace, which by the way is a terrible place for me to be. But in this case, it worked out good. I found a guy that had a used Caterpillar 3406B turbocharger that fit uh, some variant of a 3406B. Either way, it, will, it should fit this truck. He took it off because he put a performance he took that turbo off and replaced it with a performance turbo and he told me it had like about 65,000 miles on it. So now I replaced that turbo when I rebuilt the engine about a year and two months, year, three months ago. So it's out of its one year warranty. Imagine that. I'm not speaking bad about Caterpillar, it just happens to be my luck. The first thing I notice is the turbo cartridge itself. This is your oil supply line. This is your oil return line. I notice it's wet with oil. I don't really know why. This here is just some overspray from when I tried to paint the nuts or the bolts on the top here. But I'm kind of wondering why there's so much oil on this turbo cartridge. It doesn't really make sense. Don't super extend it, just take it over to the cartridge. Yep. Step aside. Oh, I thought you wanted me to pull it off. Step aside. And it's probably already damaged. There's your intake turbine and your snail. I bumped it there, so a little marking. Oh. But yeah, well, I took it off and tapped it. But yeah, there's your, there's your turbine. Okay. See, it spins pretty decent, but 
but she's in there just not in and out side to side the bearings are gone the turbo is done moment of truth boys and girls Look out. I don't know if that's supposed to be wobbly like that or not. I think it might get pinched when it's in. Might be, I don't, I don't really know. cartridge smoked caterpillar remanufactured turbocharger all the part numbers made in Mexico job our whole country out okay boys and girls turbocharger basics here your exhaust comes through that big exhaust snail that red looking iron oxide color deal and spins this here from the out and then blows out back this way. So exhaust surrounds this, spins this, and then blows out the exhaust pipe. When that spins, it spins in that same direction, this, which scoops up intake air from this direction and blows it outwardly and out this charge pipe. The spacing is the same, but you can tell this intake horn is different from this. What the difference is, I don't know. Why it's different, I don't know. You are right, there is a difference there. In length of? In the length of this tube. Show the camera, you're blocking the camera. I'm trying to, have to hold it. So there is the difference there. You're right. Well, here's what we're gonna do. Let's gently take this turbo apart. Okay. And then see if the cartridge fits in. Okay. Well. This is also remanufactured, Caterpillar remanufactured turbocharger. Mm -hmm. There is a different part number. This is a 5381, and the other one was something else. It was a little different. It was BMA 6. Call us, man, real quick. Did yeah. The way call Smokey. Well, let's go ahead and take these apart. Make a, make a. Take intake. So before I start messing around trying to re-clock or break that cartridge loose with an exhaust nail, I figure let's take a real close look before I start getting in too deep with that. We already know we have to ch change the intake side. We don't have an option there. We have no choice. It simply won't fit. Not with, it, not with this charge tube. So I went to look at this snail and I took a much closer look at it. The snail is cracked. I don't think the blades are hitting that, but certainly isn't the way it's supposed to be. I would say most likely that's my problem. So we're gonna take that snail off, right off the manifold, right off the exhaust, and we're gonna try to put the other one on as it sits might be clocked properly it should be you would think both of the b models uh maybe there's a difference between because this was a cab over and the length of the, of the pressure tube or the charge tube not sure but we'll uh we're gonna go ahead and take that off so matt break this clamp loose with the 716s okay and uh then we gotta take the snail off the exhaust manifold itself 
Now the reason I looked at that is because I started wiggling this like I did the other one. And there's a little play in there too. Maybe that play is acceptable. Maybe my cartridge really isn't bad. It's just the snail has been rubbing the uh, exhaust turbine or something. I'm not sure. So perhaps it's there wasn't an, ever an issue. So now while Matt's taking that apart, we're going to put my intake snail on this charger and see if that causes clearance problems or not. It absolutely does. Or does it? I don't know. Hmm. We certainly have a problem. What's the problem? That snail does not fit that turbo. Ooh. Like how does it not fit? I wasn't over here, I was... It looking. touches the blades and it doesn't, the flanges are different size. Oh. So we can't even put this cartridge. We determined that there was no immediate failure to the turbo. In other words, the cartridge appeared fine. There was just that small little crack in the exhaust snail. So we buttoned it back up realizing, okay, there's not a physical damage problem. It's most likely noise changed by altered airflow in the exhaust snail. We left it be at that. And we ran it for, I don't know, maybe four or five more trips to the East Coast. It never started giving me problem until the last trip on our way back, whenever we would start pulling a hill. Now we were loaded, but loaded lightly. Anytime we would start pulling a hill, we would start blowing oil out of it. I'm not talking out the stacks. I'm talking externally. I'm on the shoulder of the road. No, we're not broke down, but we're getting close. We're on 41 North. We're getting ready to head up to Mayville to drop off these uh, forklift trucks that we picked up. I've already got the GoPro set up. Honestly, I wasn't even going to film today. We're just going to unload the forklifts on camera, drop the trailer off, and go home and fix the problem. First problem, a turbocharger. Something's gone terribly wrong with my turbocharger. I think that the cartridge is cracked. I'm not sure. Either way, that's what it's looking like. She's been smoking a lot this morning. Used to be only when I was hammering on it on a hill, but now we're heavier because we got the second forklift now, and some of these little hills are just making her smoke badly. I wanted to catch a few guys before we went ahead and dropped the trailer and bobtailed back home. So let me go ahead and set that up. Now to this day, I don't know whether the oil leak is the actual cartridge having a problem or if it's the oil feed line, this hard line coming from your manifold up top. 
I don't know. To this day, I don't know. This failure was very obvious. It's still stained from all the oil blowing out of it. All the way down my exhaust, it was coating my frame. It was just oil drenching the whole truck. Now that failure was quite obvious. But now prior to this happening, I started noticing a lot of clips that I would edit. Now bear in mind, when I would start my truck, I'm in my truck. I don't review the footage until weeks, if not a month or two later when I'm editing the video. So when I would start my truck, I started noticing in editing, weird smoke coming out of the exhaust, sometimes white, sometimes black. Well, the black would be the diesel, but where's the white coming from? I know everybody thought antifreeze. I got a lot of comments on that thinking antifreeze, but I knew the turbo was going bad and there's no antifreeze here. So why did the turbo fail? What was going on? I don't yet to this day know. Today's video is real simple. We're basically just gonna change out the turbocharger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ahead and drop this one off. I went and got a brand new one from Caterpillar. I paid the core charge that way I didn't have to worry about hog swapping them until after I had gotten the old one out. Hopefully this is still good enough to get a core back on it. I did, in case we have a failure, buy a used turbo from a B model Caterpillar. Unfortunately, it was a different AR ratio, so I was nervous about putting it on. It would have done in an emergency but I didn't need to. So either way, I do have a good 3406B used with the longer intakes now if anybody wants one. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started on pulling this apart and getting to it. Caterpillar we go. 